And so I, I, need, I need somebody to help me. I need three people to help me to remind me exactly what we've heard this week. Remind me what we've heard this week. Night number one, Brother Zachary preached the message on what? What did we hear on night number one? What did we hear on night number one? Uh-huh. Getting revenge, getting even. Don't get even when somebody does something to you. Jesus turned the other cheek. That was night number one. Then Brother Hunter preached on night number two. Does anybody remember what Hunter preached on night two? What was it? Yes, ma'am. Ma being angry. That's right. Being mad, being angry. That's right. That's right. Being learning to control your anger. But then last night, it kind of took a turn. We had a good subject. And Brother Zeke preached to us. What was it on? Somebody tell me what last night was on. Huh? No, on third night, what, what was it? This little fellow right here with a bandana. Joy. joy. That's right. Jesus others yourself, having joy. And he talked about at the end of his message how to have real joy. He talked about the end of his message how to have real joy. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Just for just five minutes. I want you to give me your attention for five minutes, okay? Sit down right here and listen. Sit down right here and listen. All right, look up this way. This is how to have real joy. It comes from salvation. You say, what is salvation? It's being saved. You say, what, what is that? Well, I'm going to read you a verse. He read it last night. I'm going to read it to you again. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 10, verse number 13. This is what Captain Squid did tonight. This is what King Ooga Booga did tonight. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is salvation tonight? What is that? Salvation is this. Salvation is realizing, understanding, like Captain Squid did, that you're a sinner, that you're no good, that you're bad, that you've offended God. Now listen to me, listen to me. I know everybody's mom and daddy in here tells them what good little boys you are and good little girls you are. And you might be an excellent school student, you might clean your room, you might obey your mom and dad, you might not fight and fuss with your brothers and sisters. But listen to me, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible said there is none righteous, no, not one. The first step of salvation is recognizing, realizing, knowing that you have sinned against God. Knowing that you have done things that you shouldn't do, said things you shouldn't do. That's right, walking that unbible way. Not walking the Bible way, doing things you're not to do. Realizing, God, I'm a sinner. I've, I have sinned against you. I've hurt you. I've offended you and hurt your feelings. Lord, I am sorry for that. The Bible talks about that's called repentance, realizing you're a sinner. And salvation is not just realizing you're a sinner. Salvation is then accepting what God did for you. What did God do for you? Somebody tell me what Jesus did for us. What did Jesus do for us? Somebody tell me. He died on the cross. And then he done something else after he died on the cross. What did he do three days later after he died on the cross? He rose again. And he's alive tonight. And the only way a person can be saved, listen to me, the only way a person can be saved and have real joy in their life, it's not through being a good person. It's not through joining the church. It's not through being a nice kid. The only way to have real joy and to be saved tonight and know that your name is written in heaven and that you're going there one day is what that book just said. Calling on the name of the Lord, realizing you're a sinner and trusting Jesus Christ for your personal salvation. Now listen to me. I know this, that some of you sitting here, it, 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 you're, you're not quite old enough yet to necessarily understand what I'm saying. You hear me and you think, yeah, I, I need that. But you're not necessarily old enough to grasp it and grab a hold of them. That's fine. You keep listening. You keep listening. God's going to keep dealing with your heart, keep drawing you. But there are some of you in here that are old enough that you understand what I'm saying. You know you're a sinner. You know you've offended God, and you know you're not saved tonight. And if you die in the shape you're in, you're going to stand before God and be judged tonight for rejecting Jesus Christ. And so the point of this whole week has been this, to try and turn a light on in your life to let you recognize the only hope for your eternity is Jesus Christ. At the end of our skit tonight, Captain Squid realized he needed forgiveness. He needed salvation. And tonight, if you're not saved, at the end of this, if you're not saved, and you know it, 
and you realize you're a sinner, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go talk to one of these adults around here, okay? Some of these adults that's been helping you over there, myself, come talk to us and let us talk with you for a little bit and talk to you from the Bible about how to be saved and how to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The greatest thing you'll ever do in your life is not make a million dollars. The greatest thing you'll ever do in your life is not play sports. The greatest thing you'll ever do in your life is not even who you're going to marry. The greatest thing you're going to do in your life is trust Jesus Christ to be born again. And if you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know nothing today. You don't know nothing. All right, let's bow our heads and you pray with me tonight. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. And if you're not saved, I want you to ask the Lord to touch your heart. Deal with your heart. And Hang on just a minute. Touch your heart and deal with your heart about what I've been preaching about, okay? Let's bow our head. Father, thank you so much for letting us be here this week. God, I want to say thank you for uh, all the skids, all the food, all the workers. There's been so much labor put into this behind the scenes and from the scenes and everywhere. God, I pray that you would let the kids understand that. And God, I pray most of all for that one child that's here or more that knows they're a sinner, that knows they need Jesus, that realizes they've never trusted you, never asked you to save them. I pray God tonight would be the night that they'd call on you, be born again, be saved by your grace. And we'll thank you for it now, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, listen to me.